Hey folks, welcome back. My name is Krishna. And if you only watch one digital coloring video of mine, this is the one that I want you to watch because I'm going to try to distill some of the techniques that I use to color more efficiently. And these are just going to be dealing with flat colors, no highlights, no shading, just basic techniques that I think are going to be very, very helpful for you. So let's take a look at our first object here, which is this fully enclosed shape. I find that it's much easier to color by actually selecting the object and then filling it in. So the first step is you want to make sure that you have a brand new layer underneath your ink layer. That's the first thing. Second of all, we're going to use the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool is in the toolbar and it looks like an actual magic wand. So with that selected, I've got a tolerance set to 70. Anti-alias, contiguous, and sample all layers are all checked. And in some of my other more detailed coloring videos, I share some insight into why I use a high tolerance value. So watch those videos. I'll try to put a link to some of them in the description for this video. But what I'm gonna do now is just basically use the magic wand tool and you can see that it selects the object. I'll pick a color and I'll hit Option, Delete, or Alt Backspace. And that fills that particular color into that area. So the inks are on their own layer, the color is on its own layer as well. So that makes it very, very convenient. In our next example here, we've got a similar circle, but the big difference here is if I use the Magic Wand tool, you can see that the Magic Wand tool is selecting the inside of the circle, but it's also selecting the outside of the circle. And the reason it's doing that is because if I zoom in really close, you can see that there's a tiny gap. So there's a couple of ways that you can fix the gap. The first method is you can go back to your inks layer and then you can use your black color and you can simply fill the gap in like so. That's one way to do it. But there is a certain aesthetic that you might see in some artists work where they have a lot of gaps in their drawing and they like it that way. So if that's an aesthetic that you prefer, let me show you a workaround. So on a layer underneath your inks layer, think about the color that you want to use. I'm gonna use this kind of light blue color. And I'll just basically touch that area up. Essentially, I'm covering the gap with a color that I plan on using. From there, I can hit the W key and then use my magic wand tool and I can fill it in like so. Now it's not perfect. You can see that if I zoom in, there is a little bit of an area here that's, uh, you know, like a sliver of white. So I can again use my magic wand tool once again and hit option delete, or I can use my brush to go ahead and fill that in. So those are some cases here. Is it is the shape fully enclosed? Is it not fully enclosed? So you have a couple of options. All right, let's go ahead and. Uh, take what we've learned, and now let's go ahead and look at something that's a little bit more complex. So with this dumpster here, I can use the magic wand tool. There's one, two, three, four, five. I can make five clicks by holding down the shift key. I can add to my selection. And I've got all objects selected, and I can go ahead and fill this in with a particular color. So. From there, I can then take one side and I can then hit Command J to move that selection onto its own layer and then I can drop the lightness. So now I've got two distinct sides to this. This is a very powerful and easy way just to color. You're using the magic wand tool, you're holding down the shift key to add to your selection. Okay, so if I wanted to repeat that process, go back to what I call the base layer, that's the layer that is the color that I filled in for the dumpster and hit Command J that jumps the selection onto its own layer and then Command U. And from there, I can go ahead and change the color. I can give it whatever hue I want, which is the basic color. I can make it more vibrant or I can make it more dull. If I bring it all the way to the left, I make it more grayscale. If I bring it all the way to the right, the color is really, really vibrant. So you can use that hue saturation tool to really tweak your colors. Okay, so that's another example here. So let's hide that and let's look at something a little bit more complicated. So in this particular example, I have an arcade cabinet. And once again, I'm gonna make a new layer underneath 
the arcade cabinet. And if I select with the magic wand tool, I can proceed to go through and select each one of these items using that shift key technique that I've shown you. Uh, but there's a lot of areas that I have to select. Let me show you a more efficient way. That involves actually selecting the area outside of the arcade cabinet because there's a lot of different you know, integrated pieces here and I don't wanna to have to keep hitting the shift key. There's a lot to shift and use the magic wand tool with. So I'm gonna select the outside and then I'm gonna hit shift command I or shift control I that inverses my selection and then I can pick a base color. Option delete. And I'm not done yet. Now I have the ability to, let's say if I wanted to make this monster a greenish color, on the base color layer, I can use my magic wand tool, hit Command J, Command U, and I can dial in the color. So if I wanna make it more green, I can. I'll click OK. I'll do the same thing for the side of the arcade cabinet, Shift with the magic wand tool, Command J, Command U, I'll make that a little bit darker. Maybe I'll even change the tint on that. I'll give it kind of a purplish, tint and you can see quickly I'm just changing those colors. Go back again to the base color layer. I'm going to select the front of the arcade unit. Command J to bump it onto its own layer. Command U and I'll go ahead and pick a lighter purple color. So in this fashion you have to think about what you're trying to do here and working from this base color and simply jumping the selections onto their own layer avoids the time and the heartache from having to keep making a trip back to your color panel or your swatches panel. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you wanna work more efficiently, I think this method can really save you some time. Plus the advantage of this approach is that you have each section in its own layer. So if you don't like that shade of pink, for example, you can always go to that specific layer and you can go ahead and adjust it accordingly with the hue and saturation panel. So that's Command J, Command U. Now. Let's say that I have multiple colors, each color on its own layer. How do I quickly get to a specific layer? Let's say that I want to get to the layer that contains the monster. I know that I can look for it on the layers panel, but you can imagine that as I use this technique, there's gonna be many more layers that are going to be in this area. So I want a fast method of just getting to the monster layer. In order to do that, I'm gonna use the V key, and that gives me my move tool. And then I'm going to simply, in the composition itself, I'm going to right click. And what you'll see now is all of the layers that are underneath that specific spot on the canvas. So I've now limited the layers that are underneath that cursor to layer 13, layer 12, and the background layer. So I'll choose layer 13 and immediately I hop over to that specific layer. And while this example is simple enough because we don't have that many colors on it yet, if you're dealing with a situation where you have tens or maybe even a hundred layers, that can really save you a lot of time to jump back and forth to specific layers. So the last technique that I'm gonna show you with this is if I want to change the color of the inks. Instead of having to pick a different color and then attempt to draw over what I've already done, there's a better way. Let's select the arcade cabinet, and we wanna make a darker green for the outline of this monster. So we're gonna use color lock. Color lock looks like a small checkerboard or a Rubik's cube, if you're old enough to remember what that is. If you select that, you can see that there's a small lock symbol here, and I'm gonna pick a darker shade of green. I can do that by using the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I. I can click on the green color that I've already assigned, and now I'll go to my color panel and pick a darker green. Now I can switch back to my brush by hitting the B key and I can uh, color on the monster. Now, if I try to color anywhere else where there's no visible object in that space, it's not gonna let me color. So what the color lock does is it's, it restricts your coloring or your brushes to anything that's already visible on the layer. It basically forces you to color the lines in this specific case. So you can see now that I've been able to get a, um, you know, a color that is going to be a little bit softer than just using a black outline everywhere. So that can really help you out too. So 
Those are a few powerful techniques here. In the next video, I'm gonna actually use those techniques to color this particular composition up. It's way more complicated, but we're gonna use those basic techniques that I've just talked to you about in terms of coloring this thing up. And we're gonna to try to do it in a very expedient way. We're gonna lay down our color flat. So stick with me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that way you're not gonna miss any new content. And let me know what you think of these coloring techniques. Drop me a comment and tell me what you have picked up from the video, if you've picked something new up from the video, uh, or what you would like me to talk about in an upcoming video. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.